Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today's lesson is going to be about DNA replication or DNA synthesis. It's one of the classics of all time in biology. It's very important. And first thing I want to say about it is that, like most things in molecular genetics, is our understanding of replication has come from the most humble and simple organisms on the earth, and that's bacteria, E. coli, microorganisms. And so here's a picture of E. coli here. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that um, there is not just one enzyme that replicates DNA, although usually DNA polymerase, which is the enzyme that catalyzes the uh, replication of DNA, gets most of the credit, perhaps it should. There's really a team of enzymes uh, that, that carry it out and equal of, of importance. And there's also some other proteins, non-enzymes, that help uh, replication take place. So first thing I want to say is that in bacteria, bacterial DNA is obviously a lot shorter than uh, a human uh, DNA. DNA has, uh, in humans, have many strands. In bacteria, there's just one uh, chromosome or one strand of DNA. And so there's a site along the DNA molecule where replication begins. It's called the origin of replication. Great name. So they have, a, uh, in bacteria, there's a, a single specific sequence that's recognized by the enzyme helicase that binds and then unwinds the molecule. Um, what's interesting is, let me see if I can get this to, to appear a little larger for you. If I come over here and then click that, maybe that'll do it. Uh, as you can see here, here's this one chromosome of a bacteria, and this one sequence right here is the origin of replication, or sometimes it's called the OR sequence. Um, once the molecule opens up, um, the other molecule right here is being created, and so you have two DNA identical sequences, and this proceeds on and on. You can see here it's kind of like a little fork, a replication fork occurs, or a bubble. And it, replication occurs in both directions, and that's something that we're going to talk about a lot in this particular lesson. And the reason is, I think you might already know, is that DNA polymerase can only replicate in a growing three prime direction. And so that's why it's in opposite directions, because the molecule itself is anti-parallel. But at any rate, the chromosome replicates, and it replicates per fairly quickly. And then when you have two molecules of DNA, you know, if you're a bacteria, sorry, um, this is, this is a, your hope in life. And so like, let me just draw in the bacteria around it. And it's like, okay. Do you remember and when we talked about mitosis, the, the important thing is, is to partition the DNA? So in bacteria, once they've replicated their DNA, then they hook it to the plasma membrane, and then when the plasma membrane elongates, the DNA is partitioned. So they don't have to go through this, this huge mitosis and spindle apparatus and all of that, and then the cell's ready to divide through a binary fission. So that's all I want to say about that, but a lot of our understanding of how things work come from bacteria, which is kind of cool. So in a eukaryotic cell like us, there's the DNA is really huge. And so in order to accomplish that, it wouldn't be most efficient if you had just one origin of replication site. Can you imagine if you had just one site and the, and the DNA molecule opened and formed this bubble in dark blue? It would go into the left direction to the right, but it would sort of be like this wave that moves along, moves along. What would be more efficient is if you had multiple origin of replication sites, and that's what actually is the case. And so what happens is you get this replication bubbles happening, and then <clears throat> when the molecules elongate, they just simply, these bubbles collide, and then you have two daughter DNA molecules. And, and I kind of like the way this picture is down below. Do you notice how it's dark blue, light blue, dark blue, light blue? That's... Um, template and, and new molecule, so this is semi-conservative. And you might, you know, on the, on the face value, it's like, well, how do we know this? I mean, how do you, how do you know that it, there's bubbles? How do you know that there's a replication fork like this? And it's like, this is an actual photograph. Most powerful transmission electron micros microscope shows the replication bubble. Do you see it right there? 
and there's the fork right there and there's the fork right there so there's multiple sites so that's kind of neat if you weren't convinced uh, there's more photographs here showing DNA in this bubble right here and then here's another bubble happening and another bubble happening and so this is how DNA is replicated all, all simultaneously so it can occur more efficiently and more quickly and so I just want to give shout out to maybe the most important I said you know it requires a team but this would be the most valuable player it's this enzyme right here called DNA polymerase and it's called polymerase because it catalyzes the polymerization of new DNA or in other words it elongates the polynucleotide which is DNA at the replication fork and so this is what we want to talk about and so how it does it it's rather simple it's like once the molecule opens it basically attaches the complementary base to the template strand so what this means is if there if the template strand has an adenine it will bring in the complement which is of course thymine and then it's like well what else does it do it just brings it in and then hydrogen bonds cause it to attach sort of like magnets and so let me introduce you to the DNTPs. You, you're familiar with this from our previous discussion, but let me review. Uh, it's, of course, the sugar deoxyribose because it's minus a, an oxygen on carbon-2. That hydroxyl that's circled in red is most critical. So when we say the DNA polymerase elongates only in a three-prime direction, it's because the next nucleotide has to attach to the, to the hydroxyl group. Notice it's a triphosphate. So there's three phosphates on it, and there's four DNTP. So there's a D ATP, D TTP, D CTP, and D GTP, and they all look like that. And so, it's with regard to time, I mentioned that uh, the rate of elongation 500 nucleotides per second in a in a bacteria. So it's pretty quick, and you know, that's great. The bacteria in ideal conditions, and they're only going to live for about 30 minutes anyway, so it has to replicate its one chromosome fairly quickly. But the truth is, the, the proofreading, and this will come up in a later conversation, is not as good. And that's, and that's fine, because sometimes when you're hurried, you, you can make a mistake. And if you don't, you're not going to spend time to check it or spell check it, mistakes are going to go on. And that's all, altogether not a bad idea in bacteria, because that will create variability in the next generation by, by just de facto mutations occur more readily. And so the raw materials for replication are these uh, DNTPs. That's a picture of them. And there's four different kinds. Um, to show you another picture of that, uh, this is in particular <clears throat> uh, DGTP. So it's guanine. It's, an, it's a purine. I like this picture because it sort of mixes things up a little bit. It has the three phosphates over here on this side. Here's the deoxyribose sugar, so here's the third prime, and then here's the base over here. And I think what, what you can predict is going to happen is here, here's an existing piece of DNA, and if you want to attach a new DNTP to this uh, already existing chain, in other words, you want to increase the polymer, what's going to happen is these two... Uh, phosphates, the last two of them are going to be hydrolyzed, they're going to release, and that's going to release energy, and that's going to actually catalyze the attachment of the uh, guanine nucleotide to this growing chain, and there, and there you have it. And so that's going to be kind of, kind of cool. And so what enzyme does that? The enzyme DNA polymerase attaches that nucleotide. You can see here it's a triphosphate. And Another picture, this one's from our textbook, and so the hydrolysis of the DNTP is actually exergonic, and so that the two phosphates that are re released are actually called, this is kind of somewhat detailed and maybe trivial, but it's here, it's called a pyrophosphate, these two inorganic phosphates. They're inorganic because they're no longer connected to the, to the sugar, which, which makes it an organic molecule because of the carbon, and so the pyrophosphate pays for the polymerization and notice here that it's going to attach to the three prime direction so let me animate it just to emphasize this notice up here it's five prime let me write that in five prime five prime right there and so that would be three five three five 
3. And so it's in a growing 3 prime direction. It has to be, because that's where it attaches. So it's in a growing 3 prime direction. Here's the template. So this is a little narrow. Let me increase the size on that. So if on the uh, template strand, let's look at the template strand just for a second. If this is 5 in a growing three direction, you might have guessed it. This must be up here. This has to be three, and down here has to be five, because the molecule is going to be anti-parallel to one another. So this is the five up here in the new one, and this is the three. So it's in a growing three prime direction. I hope that's clear. I'm gonna. It's such an important point that I'm gonna keep bringing it up if you don't mind. And so here's a cartoon drawing of DNA polymerase, and here it is attaching the new DNTP. And here's a kind of funny pyrophosphate is jumping off. So these two inorganic phosphates, and that provides the energy to provide the, the linkage between the hydroxyl group and the new phosphate. It happens to be a phosphothiester bond, covalent, rather strong. Requires energy, requires an enzyme. And you're like, well, I thought the molecule was held together by hydrogen bonds. It is held together by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases, but these are covalent bonds, and also the, the structure of the nucleotides themselves are covalent. So let's not forget about that. And, and you also may recall that the forces between the bases are van der Waal forces. Now, back to this notion of anti-parallel, I just want to emphasize this. Do you remember that we talked about how the three prime has to do with the carbons? Here's the three prime hydroxyl group down here, and the five prime is where the phosphate connects. So <clears throat> as you can see, if this is five prime, then this is three down here. And then this is anti-parallel, meaning it's upside down. And so this is three to five. And so to simplify it, uh, to just to draw on top of this, you could just go like that and like that. And this is five prime, three prime, three prime. 5 prime. You could do that. The reason we're going to do that is because we're going to open the molecule up and show how it actually works because the consequences of this, if you're following it, and let me just use a different color to emphasize it. If, if the molecule opens up and you have the A, C, and cheese like this, what's going to happen is this is going to be the 5 prime over here and the 3 prime. So one direction is going to be this way and the other one's going to be copied in that direction. Let's think about that. Um, what's, what's interesting is um, it may come to you right away, or it could come in a couple of minutes, but stay with that because it's an important concept. So I don't often use red, so I'm going to use it right here to emphasize it. Polymerases can only add nucleotides to the free three prime hydroxyl group of the growing DNA strand. So in other words, DNA polymerase can only grow in a, in a three prime direction. That's very important. And so it can only elongate in the three prime direction. Now, what's the point? This creates a little bit of a problem, but it's a problem that's solved, obviously, by the cell. At the replication fork, in other words, where the bubble opens, it's going to create a little bit of an issue because one strand's going to be copying to the left and the other one's going to be copying to the right. So there's some some issue that we need to discuss. And so it creates something called a leading strand and a lagging strand. And it's like, hmm, wonder what that means. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to stay with this picture for a little bit. So here's the original dark blue. So picture no light blue or no red. So if you have just the blue and it opens up, and the molecule that op opens the molecule is DNA helicase. Say it opens up. Let's attach some, uh, some primes here so we know what we're doing. Let's go dark blue. And do you notice here in the light blue, since it's, it's growing in this direction, that must be the three, that must be, sorry, that must be the three prime direction since it's growing in that area right there. So it's three prime. So if that's three prime on this side, that must be, this is five, okay? And so if you follow this on the template, this is three. And so this must be five. And this must be, yes, three. So check it out. 
Do you notice how it's growing over in this direction? It's growing in the three prime direction. But replication begins. I want to emphasize this point. Replication begins right in the center of the bubble. So the bubble opens up. And what is happening is, do you see that little piece of red right there? <clears throat> that actually isn't DNA. That little piece of DNA, that little oligonucleotide sequence is a little piece of RNA. RNA needs to be put down first. And so this is the first thing that happens is that little red piece is put down and that little red piece is put down simultaneously, there and there. That's not done by DNA polymerase. That's done by an RNA polymerase called RNA primase. I'll come back to that. <coughs> it, uh, excuse me. It puts down a little piece of RNA because what's interesting is RNA polymerase doesn't need a nucleotide already present, but DNA polymerase needs a nucleotide present in order to attach another new one to it. And so I'll come back to that. So do you notice here when the RNA, this red is RNA, so I'm just going to go there with that. So this is RNA, this is RNA. The light blue is the new DNA. So What's happening, what's not being seen right here, is that in this little fork, this is the fork, here's the bubble, here's the fork. The reason that the fork is occurring is that there's an enzyme called DNA helicase, which is opening the molecule, it's like pulling it apart. But it's also pulling it apart over on this other side, right over here. So the bubble is elongating over in this direction. So in other words, it's opening here and it's opening here. Can you picture this? Like it's two pieces and you're like just pulling it. It's going to get opened on that side and that, that side. So do you notice up here on the top, when the RNA polymerase attaches and the DNA, I'm sorry, when the RNA attaches, the DNA polymerase will grow it, grow, 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 grow in this direction. Picture these things not here at first. So what's interesting about it is when this bubble opens up, the, the strand that's going toward the bubble opening, the overall direction of the bubble opening, this is referred to as the, the leading strand. And I'm going to simply label it that. This is the leading strand, leading, because it's going in the direction of the bubble opening. And it's fine. I'll, it'll be continuous because as the bubble opens this will just simply follow along do, 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 like that but then as the bubble opens up do you notice up here this is moving in this direction so in other words when this molecule opens up the bubbles go in here and so this dark blue hasn't been replicated do you see that part right there and so what has to happen is a piece of RNA needs to attach and then uh, DNA polymerase extends and another piece attaches and DNA polymerase extends and another piece extends. And so the part of this area right here is referred to as the lagging strand, lagging. And even though that is clear, it may not be until you actually see this animation that's coming up. Let me repeat it on the bottom here. So when the molecule opens up, RNA primer puts down primase, puts down the RNA primer, and so now this is the leading strand. And as it opens up, and this moves in this direction, another RNA needs to put down, and then another RNA needs to be put down. And so portions of the molecule are in little fragments. And so what has to happen, you, your DNA obviously isn't in fragments, is that the RNA needs to then be removed. And then the little fragments need to be sutured together or glued together. And so these fragments were first observed by a Japanese biologist by the name of Dr. Okasawi, or Okasaki, I should say, Okasaki, apologize. Um, and these are known as Okasaki fragments in his honor. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then there's an enzyme called DNA ligase that actually attaches those fragments together. And so let's continue our conversation, and maybe that'll be more clear. Here is one section of the fork. So the bubble part is over here. So here's the RNA. So it's not just two nucleotides. It's, it's, a, it's approximately 10. 
So RNA primase, which is an RNA polymerase, will first put down RNA, and then, let's go green, the DNA polymerase will come along. Let me add it, DNA, whoops, DNA polymerase will come and start attaching DNA nucleotides like this. And it's in obviously the growing three prime direction. This would be the leading strand because in this portion of the fork, this is where you're going. And so it's, it'll be continuous. You're like, okay, what's up with these single strand binding proteins? Well, when DNA helicase opens the molecule up, before anything can happen, before the primase can attach to it and start putting it down in DNA polymerase, you might be asking the question, once you open it up, it might just come back and stick together like magnets. So you pull it apart and they come and stick right back together. And so these single stranding binding proteins help to accomplish holding the, the molecule apart. So that's what that is. This guy upstream from the fork is called topoisomerase. And what that cleverly does, it sort of spins around the DNA. It sort of like goes along and anytime the DNA becomes too tightly coiled in a helix, it would actually form like a little bit of a knot. And so that enzyme cleverly can a able to like make little cuts in the, in the side strand of the molecule between the phosphate sugar right over in this area. And therefore it prevents um, kinking occurring upstream of the bubble uh, fork. It's kind of, kind of interesting, maybe. So here is a close-up of the fork. Here's the leading strand and the lagging strand are the Okasaki fragments. The leading strand is continuous. The lagging strand is discontinuous. Um, okay, and so these short segments are called Okasaki fragments, and you can see them here. Um, and then the enzyme DNA ligase is an enzyme that will come down here and actually suture those pieces up together to make sure that the, the whole molecule is continuous. So I'm going to actually try to come off of this. Let's go. Did I really want to do that? Let's see. I'm going to come over here and actually show you a little animation of this scene right here. Let's go. Let's grab that and show you this. Okay, so here's a DNA helix, um, and we want to replicate it. So let's see what we can do. So there's a replication bubble, and the helic helicase is opening it up. And so there's our bubble. Notice, let me back it up a little bit. Notice it's opening in this direction, and it's opening in this direction. Just want to point that out. And so the leading strand is always going to be toward where the bubble is open opening. Okay, so there it is opening and you might say to yourself, hey, what happens if it collapses and hydrogen bonds with itself? But oh no, the single stranded binding proteins are coming in to prevent that. You're like, whoo, good thing. Okay, what are you going to think that's going to happen next? Well, you need to put down a little RNA, don't you? So let's do a close up. And so the enzyme that puts down RNA is called RNA, you guessed it, primase. And so it's going to go it's kind of weird looking, sort of looks like Play-Doh. And so it puts down a little piece of RNA, but what's not being shown is that it puts down RNA here, and it also puts some RNA here as well. Let's let it play. And so clearly this is going to be the leading strand. And why do I say clearly the leading strand? Because, let me see if I can animate it, because this is going to be the growing three prime direction in this in this way like that growing three prime and this is where the helicase is going to be opening up so check it out if you don't mind me like going far with this so if you put a little piece of primer here this would be five prime and this would be the three prime so check it out so this is RNA so when the polymerase comes along and it starts growing it in this direction, you're like, hey, look, both of them are, what's the problem? Well, what, what about that? What about this? And you're like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what's going to go on. Well, this is the leading strand, and this part right here would be the lagging strand, because 
you guessed it, what's going to have to happen is an RNA primer is put down like that. So it's five prime, three prime. And then the DNA comes along and starts going like this, right? Boo -doo 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 -hoo, like that. And so this is a, a Okasaki fragment. You're like, well, it looks pretty big. Well, it, lo it does look pretty big, but as the molecule opens further, this is one fragment, and then the same thing is going to be a problem just beyond. So another piece has to come, and another piece has to come, and then this is attached by DNA ligase. Okay, let me let it let me let it play out. And so this video is just emphasizing the leading strand, and so let's let, let it play. So there's the RNA primer. Ah, here comes DNA polymerase. It starts adding in the new uh, DNA nucleotides, complementary to the template strand. No, now it's picking up the pace. So it's cruising along, cruising along, and it's fabulous. Look at the single-stranded binding proteins are jumping ship. And it's emphasizing, look, it's in a growing three-prime direction, and this is called the leading strand. But let's focus up here in the next video. Let's see. So here's the lagging strand emphasis. So here's the leading. Okay, so there we are, and now here's that little piece that I was talking about. Now let's watch what happens. So hey, look, DNA polymerase is making this, and so are you ready for this? Like this part up here, this part up here is going to be the new leading strand. That's the new leading strand because in that direction, uh, that's where the helicase is opening the bubble. So this is the leading strand over here would be the lagging. This is the leading, and then just to the left of this would be the lagging. So let me let it play. So what are we going to do about this? This is like unincorporated. Now watch the problem. See when you put this down and you're cruising around like this, and then watch what happens to the fork. It's like, okay, coming along, coming along, coming along, and then it's like, uh-oh, what am I going to do now? Let's look at this problem for a second. If you don't mind, I'm going to add a little detail to this. The DNA polymerase that replicates the DNA in this direction is called DNA polymerase, but it's actually given the numeral 3, DNA polymerase 3. This RNA is then, when this piece comes up to this, this RNA needs to be removed. And who removes it? Another enzyme, sorry, for about, sorry about the complexity, called DNA polymerase 1. That removes the RNA primer and then DNA, what, ligase, comes along and actually attaches it. Let's let this play out further. And so as you can see, um, what you're going to get over here is some Okasaki fragments. And so the gaps are closed by ligase, and that's what that's showing. And so I like what's going to happen next over on this side. Here's a detailed view of the situation. So here's the leading strand over here, and the primer is put down. It's kind of nice. So it's a little bit of a review. So the primer is put down, and then DNA polymerase starts growing it in the three prime direction. But remember, the bubble is opening up over on the other side. So check it out. So that's cruising along, and it's rather nice. But then over here, you're like, wow, what the? So another primer comes, and it does this. And then when this opens up, you're going to see what's going to happen. It's all going to be like, aha. And so, okay. Polymerase is making this. And so notice how this is fragmented. There's a fragment, there's a fragment, and then this is leading. And so this repeats over and over again. And so this will show it. <laughs> um, okay, the, another DNA polymerase. That's DNA polymerase 1. And then watch this. This is good. And then ligase comes along and sutures it together. So it's fabulous. And so it, I was hoping for this <laughs> to do a little bit more, but it's fine. I thought, I thought you might get the point on this. And so let's go back to the notes if you don't mind doing that either. I'm asking as if you have a say in the matter, but I think you do. Um, cartoon. And you're like, well, cartoons are too simple, but actually this cartoon is profoundly drawn because not only does it show the uh, replication fork and the overall direction is, is over here. This is helicase. This is DNA polymerase. And it's like one's going to go in this direction, one's going to go in this direction. But, you know, look here. Do you notice how they're attached? 
those other videos showed the DNA polymerase as being separate. And so one of the final things that I'm going to say uh, about replication is this, our, later, our latest understanding of replication is that these DNA polymerase 3 molecules are actually dimer and they're actually attached to one another and it's like well how can that happen since one's going way down this way and one's going way down this way I'll show you a picture there this this one on the bottom right here actually grabs DNA and coils it up in a really curious way and so that cartoon is actually pretty accurate so one of the problems as I mentioned this orally and you saw it in the video is that DNA polymerase cannot initiate synthesis so a primer needs to be put down it's approximately 10 nucleotides in length and in the cell that primer is RNA uh, and the enzyme is RNA primase when we start talking about DNA replication in a test tube in a, in a technique called uh, polymerase chain reaction we bypass this problem uh, by putting RNA primer down because we don't want to add the enzyme RNA primase what we do is simply use DNA primer and it just finds the area that we're interested in uh, that's complementary and then it anneals and then DNA polymerase can do its thing and so this is kind of a cool diagram from our book here's the RNA primer DNA uh, I'm sorry RNA primase puts it down and then once it's put down then the DNA polymerase can uh, elongate and then obviously the RNA needs to be removed and DNA polymerase 1 does that and then the new piece is ligated in and so this is the process and so um, re uh, returning to the original problem is so you get this leading and la lagging strand and the DNA can only go DNA polymerase can only go in one direction which is towards the opening of the fork so the direction the overall direction is if it's going towards the fork is leading if it's going away from it it's lagging and the, those Okasaki fragments uh, are created and so let's look here at a little ledger of enzymes involved since there's several in proteins so it sort of makes sense of this so what actually unwinds the helix and that's called DNA helicase what keeps so that initiates replication what actually keeps the the uh, double helix apart that single stranded binding proteins now as far as the leading strand you've, you need a one primer put down by primase then you need DNA polymerase and there you go and then you need a DNA polymerase to remove that but on the lagging strand you need the primase DNA polymerase DNA polymerase to remove the primer and then you need ligase which connects the Okasaki fragments together that's important so helicase unwinds, unzips, single-stranded binding protein, keeps them apart. So here's a sort of a, a three-dimensional, looks like a bunch of grapes, but it's helicase unwinding the helix, which separates the, the bubble and creates the replication fork. This is kind of cute. These are the single-stranded binding proteins, which are keeping the molecule apart. Here is topoisomerase, which is preventing kinking from occurring upstream from the replication fork this this guy is helicase I believe and so again here's that original picture that I was showing you before so uh, leading because it's in that direction this is the one lagging behind leading in this direction because this is what's opening and then lagging in this direction okay I hope that's helpful again a close-up diagram of that situation um, DNA polymerase 3 is the one that's elongating, and DNA polymerase 1 is the one replacing the primer. Uh, more pictures from this. Here's the leading strand, and then back here would be the, the lagging strand. Bup, 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 bup. And then over here would be the leading strand, and then back here would be the lagging strand. And so finally, we come to this diagram. It's I, I'm not saying that replication is easy, but in principle it's easy and so just to just to conclude with this you know Jim Watson and Francis Crick uh, when they discovered the the structure and complementary nature of DNA being the double helix and how the the two polynucleotides are complementary it explained rather elegantly how replication can occur in other words the molecule can just simply open up 
and the two sides would be template for the two new molecules. And you can leave it at that and go, hey, look, semi-conservative, two new two strands, it's fabulous. They coil into the two sides of the sister chromatids during mitosis. It's great. But we now know more about all the enzymes involved in RNA primase and, and the uh, implications of DNA polymerase only being able to go in a growing three prime direction and so the molecule must be replicated in a leading and a lagging uh, fashion. And so I, I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of complex, but the more time you spend with it, I think the more time you'll enjoy it. Okay, thanks for watching.